All right, guys, welcome to Pack West Bigfoot. This is David, and uh, first and foremost, just to let you know, um, I uh, um, actually pulled two names out of the hat this month, and uh, one of the emails is Brown Dwarf. Uh, you know who you are, buddy. Uh, anyways, um, you are the winner of uh, one of these books here that I have, and also I decided to pull a name out internationally, and uh, I'll be getting that uh, book out to you next week, Keith, heading out to Ireland. So I decided to do that this month only. I usually just have one winner, but this month I kind of decided to do two winners, so why not? <laughs> Keith's been following for a while anyways. So anyways, uh, thank you guys very much for being here, and also just to let you know, we are about to hit one million views here on PacWest Bigfoot, and I want to say thank you guys so very much for kind of keying in to the uh, encounter stories and everything else. Um, I also want to give a shout out to um, Monster X Radio and uh, Gunnar Morrison over there from uh, the Sasquatch Coffee Company as well. Uh, he's also the he also runs uh, Monster X Radio, and, and thank you very much for letting me be on the interview um, and kind of explaining what PacWest Bigfoot is about, what this community is. This community here, guys, is really just taking these encounters and turning them into those really awesome, you know, encounter stories um, based on a true story. Here we are. So that's what we're doing here with the blog and, and uh, the encounter stories but what I also like to do is this um, I try to do this every week or every couple weeks as they come in I like to sit down with an individual and uh, have them tell us um, their experiences um, personally and today I have a gentleman named Ralph out of the state of Washington at Squatchy State of Washington and uh, he is going to uh, share with us two uh, experiences that he has had um, with this um, elusive animal or creature, Bigfoot. So, Ralph, welcome to PacWest Bigfoot. And if you want to, go ahead and take it away, man. Go ahead and uh, walk us through uh, that day a little bit and up to the point of that first uh, encounter experience. All right. Thanks, Dave. Uh, let me give a little bit of uh, area where it's at. So, it's north of Seattle, uh, up in Everett, and then you go east on Highway 2. It's up near Index on the Skycomish River. And I've been fishing up there in the summertime um, to get away from the crowds, the rafters, the swimmers, and everybody else, try to get some solitude. And uh, I've been doing pretty good. I'm kind of bragging to my buddies. Oh, yeah, I'm doing pretty good up there. I'm getting a little sure of myself, so... I invited one of my friends, and uh, we were up there, I think it was August sometime, can't give the exact date, but uh, um, we got up there in the evening after a day of work, and it's still light up until, I don't know, 9.30 at night mm -hmm. before it gets dark up mm -hmm. here, so we're up there fishing, we, got, we fish just one area, nice pool, and uh, no fish, maybe a couple small ones, nothing really to write home about. And we worked our way up to this other run. And uh, it's like a 200-yard, 300-yard walk across this huge gravel bar, um, really wide and open. On the opposite side of the river was pretty thick forest, probably 50-foot uh, dug firs plus going up to this big hillside. And uh, this hole looked really nice. I never caught any fish out of it, but we're going to try it anyways. Um, we get up there, and we start fishing. And I'm not sure if any of you guys have fly fished before, but you're concentrating on your cast, laying the line out there without much of a splash, looking for that little rise of the fish. So your, your focus is on that. So you're not look, really paying attention to much around you. Um, there's steelhead that go up there, and uh, that was the actual target. I was hoping to catch one of those. So we started fishing. I'm really doing good on my casting, showing off, going, yeah, I'm doing pretty good, just waiting for that trout to come up. And uh, you know how something moves out of your peripheral vision that uh, it just catches your eye, but you can't place place it? So I'm fishing, and something just changes out of, my, out of my eye across the river, but I'm waiting for that big fish. So I'm casting. The fly drifts down a little bit. My buddy's working downstream for me probably 20 20 yards or something another cast no fish and then I start noticing it what's across there I look up and I see this huge shape this broad shoulders this cone head I spent a lot of time in the woods 
Um, mm. I was a Boy Scout. My dad ran a trap line, a hunter. Mm. I, I was in the Marine Corps, so I've seen all kinds of animals. I this I was scared. I was literally terrified. You had that flight or flight, fight or flight instant uh, instinct. Mm. I I just wanted to run. I I, I didn't want to. I went left. How far back in the woods was this thing? It was squatting right across the river, um, probably forty to fifty yards. So I I seen it clearly. It it wasn't it 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 scared it scared. I don't know. I'm I still getting creepy crawlies just thinking about it. But it was across the river watching me and my buddy fish. Um, I jumped out of the river. My buddy looked over at me. He said my face was white as a ghost. My eyes were big as saucer plates. He thought I had a steelhead on. Then he heard something <laughs> ac- across the river running through the bushes. He didn't get a visual, but with the, the ambient sound of the river, it's kind of hard to hear something, yeah. unless it's big, running through the bushes. Um, so, and yeah, I just, I, I wanted to go home. I'm a diehard fisherman, but I was like, I'm done. I, I am not fishing up here ever again. And, uh, even though I was doing good, um, but after that I started doing research, realizing these guys watch people mm-hmm. and it, it, it's kind of scared me a little bit going, how often are you up in the woods with something watching you and you don't even notice it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you mind if I, I'm going to ask you just a couple questions here. Sure. Um, across the river, how was it in the woods? It was it like sitting behind something or what was, what was it? It wasn't like plain and day out in the middle of, of no, it wasn't. It was the, it, the woods came right to the water. It was really, really okay. thick. A lot of, uh, um, Doug furs and, uh, spruces over there. Okay. Um, and alders. So it was tons of underbrush, but it came right down to the edge of the water. It was squatting down, um, just watching us. Okay. And uh, color of hair. How, how tall do you think this thing was? If it was to stand up, Oh, squatting down, it was like four or five feet easy. Oh, geez. Uh, shoulders were probably three and a half, four feet across um, the cone head. Uh, the hair was a tannish brown with a little bit of red in it. Um, okay. Yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. And the it, cone-ish head, could you tell anything of the face? Was it covered in hair or was it kind of have some sort of skin showing or to be honest as soon as my eyes caught that shape I, 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 <laughs> pooped your I pants and ran yeah i know <laughs> I, yeah i was like i'm done i'm done i'm out of here this is this is not natural this is not what i'm taught i ah, yeah science says hey there's bears out here and eh, it's no stinking bear that's i seem bear and um it just changed my whole outlook on going in the woods. So I, you don't just wander out there anymore. It's like, uh, I'm not the apex predator. So, yeah. Yeah. So I didn't go up there for four or five years. I stopped going up there. I was like, no, I'm not going up there. Did my research, went out and bought a pistol. I don't want to, I don't want to shoot the thing, but there's there, excuse my French, there's assholes everywhere in every species. Mm -hmm. Um, but so I started fishing again up in the upper river. I stayed down low for the nine year towns, uh, sky coma. I mean, uh, startup gold bar in that area. Mm -hmm. Finally, I started venturing up there again. Uh, and, uh, I read, I don't know if it's true or not that it was some Indian legend. They said, you take a cedar branch and you put that on your pack. And when you go into territory of Bigfoot, it's a sign of, uh, uh, you come in peace. You're not there to harm it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how much uh, wise tale it is or whatever. So I started going up there, started fishing more. Um, and uh, I got this one spot that I really like. It's like a you park on the highway and it's a quarter mile walk down there. And I'm walking down there. It's big, huge trees. You got ferns all around, maple trees all over the place. It's a really peaceful walk. And, and it winds down through the forest and you get down there and there's a, uh, it's a pretty big pool and it's not a very big gravel bar, maybe 50 by uh, 30. 
and then it has a nice cliff on the other side. So it gets a nice shadow on there, great for fishing. So me and my dog get down there, and uh, we start fishing. This was in October uh, last year. And uh, I'm swinging flies through there, and I get a couple good takes, and I'm like, okay, there's something in there. And uh, so um, dogs all passed out in the rocks because they're all nice and warm. And <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mosey on back to uh, the rocks, sit, find a nice little spot. I sit down. I tie on a fly. Uh, I didn't like it, so I go rummage through my bag, and I find and uh, I find a good uh, one I like to use. So I tie that bad boy on. Um, I put my gear back in my bag, and uh, um, as I was doing that, I called my dog over, and the dog comes walking over. I noticed I still had my sunglasses down there as she came over, and uh, there's a splash. Not like a normal splash of a salmon, but a... Uh, like you take a slingshot and you shoot a rock into the water, something mm -hmm. with that velocity. As soon as that thing hit, all the hairs in the back of my neck stood up. Jeez. Uh, yeah, and then I look up and I see a rock about the size of a cantaloupe or a small watermelon hitting the water. <sighs> Huge splash. All After all my readings, I sort of figured out, oh, shit. Um, it's... I'm getting rocks thrown at me. It's a big foot. What, what, I'm, I, what do I do? What do I do? Mm -hmm. This time, no fight or flight. I decided to stay. I hold my ground, picked up my stuff hurriedly in a quick manner, not wanting to piss off a really, really big, uh, I don't <laughs> know down. what it is. Yeah. yeah. I got all my stuff in my bag, uh, stood up, and I, and I waved. And I'm saying, hey, I'm not here to harm you. I'm just here to fish. And I backed up. And I backed up, me and the dog. The dog's ears are all pointed across the river. She's all intent going, well, who's throwing rocks? What's going on? And uh, I get back into the trees, and I could hear something moving through that hillside across the way. Hmm. Pulled, my Go, pulled my GoPro out, started filming a little bit. I, never, I didn't get anything, but um, yeah, yeah. And so... It was only a mile from the other spot, so it's a pretty, uh, pretty squatchy area up there. I can say now, but yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's it's scary to get a rock thrown at you. It's like wow, they're they're more prevalent than just one. They're not just one wandering around. So I don't yeah, think. Yeah, that uh, that whole Skykomish River. Um, I'm thinking. Uh, you know, I had a second-hand account that I heard from there that's actually on the PacWest um, YouTube channel. I'm thinking there's, like, quite a few kind of running up and down that river, man. That's that's a, that's a pretty, pretty – you know, I just – I hear a lot from, from, from that – near that river. It's yeah. kind of like going outside of Yakult, uh, Yakult uh, Washington, or up towards Mount St. Helen. Yakima. Yakima, yeah, Yakima. Well, there's a no, there's a y y Yakult um, oh. that's um, right outside there from the Pinchot National uh, Pinchot Gifford National oh, Forest. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's supposed to be a hot spot too. Yeah, yeah. Shows you how much I know about Washington. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, there's some places in Oregon where I can't pronounce the name. It's what, what, what? Tell it. Tillamook. Oh, Tillamook. That. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tillamook is kind of uh, uh, Umatilla. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, always some some crazy names. Then again, I'm Irish, so yeah. yeah <laughs> when we yeah. spell Owen, we use half the alphabet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so but, uh, yeah, that's interesting, man. So you know, across the way, sitting there, just kind of watching you. Do you think that thing? I, I wonder if that thing was like there the whole time, or it just came upon you. That see, that's I don't know, but I I caught something out of my peripheral vision after being there for about ten minutes of fishing. I don't know if it we startled it and it decided to play like a possum, play possum, and hold still and watch, or did it see us and go on? What are those crazy two-legged people trying to do with those little bitty fly rods? There's salmon in here. I want to get one of those. Or I, I maybe they're curious. I don't know. But it, yeah, I, 
I'm thinking that if you'd been there for 10 minutes and it's squatting down, maybe you would have heard it if it walked up. Maybe it was there. Maybe it was uh, it was fishing and heard you coming in, got up, squatted down because you popped up so fast. You guys came in fast. So I, Yeah, I, I don't know, but it, what, it, it, it just scares me now thinking about it. It, just, it, it. it changes your whole outlook outlook on going in the woods. It's like, oh, I'm just going to go take a hike in the woods. Yeah. Well, you take a hike in the woods, you, you don't see – there's lots of cougars out there. There's lots of bears. You don't see cougars and bears very much. No. But they're there. So if you have something else that lives in the woods, it can, it can be anywhere, and you're not going to notice five feet off a trail. Oh hey, how's it going? <laughs> you walk on by, you don't even know. It's just gonna say. Oh, oh yeah, it was. It was like when me and my mom found those print, those footprints. You know, she looks off into the woods, looks back at the prints, looks at the woods, looks at the prints, and then just freaks out. You know, at first I thought she did see something maybe, but she just ran off. You know, and and uh, who knows? It could have still been there. It really could have been. She might not have seen it. She didn't see it or anything. I know that, but could still be standing in there i mean the the forest here people don't understand how thick and dark this stuff can be even on a sunny day oh yeah and if yeah. something like that is just sitting there squatting these things um gosh it's like those statues of those you know those people that do the in vegas oh <laughs> they're yeah, just standing yeah. there going Arr. you know it's like that you know except for even, probably even better <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know that's um that's pretty it, interesting, man. Yeah, I don't go up there at, well, late at night anymore. Once it starts getting dark, I'm a uh, I'm back in the truck. I know uh, it's his land. I'm gonna let him have it to it. I'm not gonna tromp on his territory during his time. It's yeah. It's he can yeah. I went actually me being a smart fellow that I was. I went back up there the next day, and. Uh, Earlier though, not so late. I did catch a, I did catch a steelhead. So, but nice. uh, yeah, I just, I just think he's got to be smart when you're in the woods, and if you're there, just walk out of there. I don't think they want to hurt you per se. Maybe. But uh, you know, some like you said, some of them can just be totally aggressive, and some of them might be a little bit more skittish and just or, or curious. Um, you know. Um, well, unless they're really hungry, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, you're sitting up there around October. I don't think it's all that hungry. It's had all summer to eat. So, uh, um, you know, plus being by the river, I mean, if, if they're by a river like that, it's probably a whole lot easier to get food out of a river than it is a lake. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, yeah. so... But yeah, that's probably why he was chasing me out of there. To be honest, yeah, he's probably wanting to fish, and he was like, "Yeah, these are mine. Just, just go away." Yeah, I got a, uh, I got a, a guy who um, I've known for quite some time. He's an older guy. Well, I've known, I knew him for quite some time. He's not alive anymore. Uh, they call him the Goat Man. And he lives on the uh, border of Oregon and California. He'll pop back in, back and forth. He lives down there just on the other side of the Colstein Valley. And mm -hmm. in Oregon here is, is like back of Mount Ashland and stuff. But um, out in the woods, he was a hermit guy. He just lived in the woods with a hut and everything. And he'd come into town, into Ashland. And, and, and I guess he'd go into White Rica too from time to time. But he's a hermit. And uh, he had a really bad – it was a bad run-in, man. He, he thought they were they – were, it or they, whatever was, they were. It was going to kill him. It was going to really? eat him. Yeah, he was like, he he actually ended up moving, uh, moving his whole camp and everything else uh, back up towards, uh, um, kind of outside of Ashland, Oregon, up towards this place called Grizzly Peak on the other side of it. It's kind yeah. of private land, but he hung out there anyways. Well, anybody know it? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty crazy, man. You got to really watch. And actually, I have that encounter coming out here in the 
next couple of weeks. It's pretty, pretty insane. He told me about that. And I re- and he, he told me firsthand it was pretty cool, but he, he just passed away this year. So, uh, uh, or sorry. last year, end of last year, he was just a really nice old guy. So, um, let, let but, me tell uh, you that walk out of that woods that night when they had the rocks thrown at me, I was fly rod in the hand, left hand pistol on the right. That was the scariest walk I've had in a long <laughs> time. That it first like, one? No, the second one. Oh, the first second one, one. I, I, I didn't carry a gun before that. I was oh, like, yeah, la, la, right. la, 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 la. And the second one, I was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm bringing a pistol from now on. I just want to protect myself. I don't want to kill one by any means. But I was, yeah, that was this, one of the scariest walks. Hairs on the back of my neck. Yeah, yeah. My bad. It's a it's the last thing I want to do is shoot one unless it. Yeah, no, that's not my intention. Yeah, that's that's pretty much my belief too. Unless it's unless it's really aggressive and your your life is threatened, there's no reason to shoot the thing. Um, they know. Yeah, they know what so, guns are. So I think so they, too. Yeah, I think I think like all animals, they have a certain innate fear of man, except for certain animals like like sharks for instance i just they're just mindless yeah. eating machines but you know land animals and things like that i believe do have a certain kind of skittish fear of human beings built in most uh, animals have any contact with man have a bad taste unfortunately a bad taste they go oh yep. those guys i gotta stay away from them so. Yeah, and I think it's the same thing with with Bigfoot, especially like maybe if it was just you at that time, um, might be a little bit different. But you know, it when there's multiple people, I really think it's it's very. I have a a couple who um, gave me an account from Lamolo Lake, and uh, <clears throat> it came into their camp. It was actually right next to their tent and stuff. And it just looked at the wife, I guess, right in the face, right on the other side of the screen there for a second, and then got into the ice chest and whatnot and took off with some food, fish or something. And uh, um, But it, it really, they didn't feel too threatened, threatened after a few minutes. It was just, they just didn't feel like it was, it was, it was after them. It was yeah. the food in the camp. Yeah, so, yeah. That's it's still, but it, it puts you in perspective. But you don't know. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. no so, it's a, who knows? It's, is it an animal? Is it a, it, it, at what intelligent level is it? Is it way beyond a, uh, let's say, what's the smartest animal? Uh, porpoise? Is it way beyond that? Is well, it even a land level? animal, you'd be looking at, you know, some sort of, of ape-like creature that is extremely, you know, smart smarter than probably a gorilla or a chimp you know much more you know more intelligent yeah. um yeah, I, I always come across thinking that they are gigantopithecus i don't think that gigantopithecus is is uh um, extinct i think it exists in the form of bigfoot or sasquatch wow. and i believe that it's it's a whole lot more um intelligent than the average typical uh ape or monkey out here so um, yeah, that's been it, my belief because we have evidence for Gigantopithecus, and now we have all this evidence and and encounters and you know sightings and footprints and everything of Gigantopithecus, basically. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> why can't it be? <laughs> yeah, no. I all I know is that there's something big with broad shoulders and throws rocks that's up in the woods where I like to fish and. Uh, yeah, I can't. I tell people my story. Some people laugh at me, and other people believe me. And it's like, I'm just telling you what I saw. I, I, I can't. Yeah. Science says it doesn't exist. I seen something that science says doesn't exist, but I'm telling you what I saw. And here's the information. Ask me the questions. I'll tell you what I saw. Is if you laugh at me, that's fine. But if you believe me, it, hey. It's more information for you. Knowledge is power. The more knowledge you have, yeah. the more power you have. No, I like that. I like that. I like your. I like that uh, experience. I like the way that it was just kind of, just motionless. Like, you guys just kind of popped in there and caught it by surprise, possibly while it was getting ready to fish, or maybe it already was. Maybe there was fish over there by it. And maybe it didn't leave because it had its food there and it didn't want anything to happen to it. So it just figured squat down stay down be quiet they'll leave they're humans yeah they always yeah. leave yeah yeah they're, who's gonna see me i'm just gonna sit here emotionally yeah and not move 
they're the, the what do they call it? He's the the king of a hide and go seek. Yeah, yeah, Bigfoot. the hide and seek champion of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's funny. Yeah, awesome. well, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. It's it, cool. It, that's my story. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that, man. I greatly appreciate it. I want you to hold on for a second before I uh, end this. Um, uh, talk to you for just another minute here. Right. But uh, I want to say thank you very much, man, for being on here and everything else, sharing your encounter and everything else. And uh, like I said, here at PacWest Bigfoot, guys, we're just about sharing the encounter stories. Um, that's what we do. Um, you know, in reality, we're not here to, you know, decide or make judgments on whether people's you know encounters or experience or the stories or whatever true or not true we just like to listen to them and we we enjoy the information we enjoy not just the education but the entertainment value of it and everything else we just enjoy it all and so um you know that's why i love doing this um so thanks ralph man thanks <laughs> that was awesome and and here's the deal also man um uh, uh hang on for just a moment but i'm going to say one other thing to you real quick if you have any more experiences anything like that ever again i want you to just bring it on to me send it to me an email i can update people let them know what's going on up in that uh, sky comish uh, neck of the woods um and uh, kind of keep people updated because uh, that's pretty interesting man i mean if you've had two experiences there's nothing saying that you know, so far you, you've been okay with it. There's nothing wrong with maybe going back up there, doing some more fly fishing, see what else happens. Oh, Bring a friend, I'm, though. Um, yeah, <laughs> Bring a friend I'm gonna, and a gun. And a camera. <laughs> Got to have proof. I'm going to get camera. proof. Get yeah, proof. I'm a, yeah, so everybody can say, oh, we're not crazy. There you go. There you yeah. go. All right, man. Well, thank right, you guys Dave. very much. You hang on for one second there, Ralph. And guys right. over here, at, uh, thank you so very much for hanging out with PacWest Bigfoot uh, today for this awesome, short little encounter. And uh, I will see you guys on the next one.